Welcome back to the Citizen Data Academy. This video is the seventh in our Introduction to Open Data module. We'll cover how to perform basic analysis in EBRGIS. This ties back into the previous video, where we showed you how to create your own map. Now we'll take things to the next step and explore the more advanced features available in ArcGIS Online. I've created a point layer showing the locations of drainage issues reported on Perkins Road. Let's imagine we want to find the hot spots with the most incidents. This is an example of how a map can be deceptive at first glance, since only one point geocoded at a certain location is visible at a time. When we click on the point at this intersection, we can see there are actually four incidents here, even though only one is visible. We'll need to turn this into a heat map to get a true idea of where the most drainage concerns occur. Now we can see that the area of Perkins Road between Broussard Street and the I-10 overpass has had frequent drainage concerns. The area near the intersection of Perkins and Segan Lane has also had many reported drainage issues, while the area around Lee Drive has not had any. What if we want to make our own custom layer so that we can easily select only the points that lie within a certain area of the map? I'll open another tab with my content folder. Click the new item button in the top left. There are many choices. We'll create a feature layer. From these choices, I'll build a layer from scratch without using one of the ArcGIS Online templates. Notice you can make a layer with points, lines, polygons, or a combination of the three. This will be a polygon shape file, so I'll select that option. We approve the default settings, and now we need to select the default map extent when we refresh the map. I'll move my cursor over East Baton Rouge Parish and zoom in. Like always, we give this layer a name and at least one tap. Then we click Done. You'll see the layer is created. For now, it's an empty layer with no data and only the default fields. I'll add this new layer to the map from the My Content folder. To draw this feature, we go to Edit Mode. You can tell Edit Mode is active by a blue underline in the tab. This underline is not present when you're not editing a feature layer. I'll select the new polygon and draw it on the map at the intersection of Perkins and Segan. We double left click to finish drawing. Now we can move the polygon around if we need to. Once we're happy with its placement, we can close edit mode. I'll now switch from my free personal ArcGIS developer account to my City Parish account, which is a paid account tied to the EBRGIS portal with more advanced capabilities. A free account is very helpful, but it can only take you so far. For a low monthly cost, you can upgrade your free account in order to access a wide selection of analytical tools to use in your maps. In the Analysis tab, there are six different categories of analytical tools and functions to choose from. You can click on the blue icons to show us some information explaining the purpose of each tool and tool category. Additional helpful information is also available at this webpage. And each individual tool even has its own page with detailed descriptions and examples of the workflow process. I'll demonstrate some of the most commonly used tools now. I've added several layers to the map. The summarized data tools are useful for providing some basic information and descriptive statistics from our data layers. Let's use the Aggregate Points tool to count how many apartment complexes are in each neighborhood in the map. Doing this manually would be tedious, but with this tool, we can get accurate counts in less than a minute. We simply tell the tool to aggregate the points from the apartment layer into the polygons of the neighborhood layer. You can rename the output layer, but I'll keep the default here. Anytime you run analysis, that process consumes a certain amount of credits. 
You get 50 credits per month to use as part of your subscription ArcGIS account. Most operations need only a fraction of a single credit. It's unlikely you'll exceed the monthly allotment of credits, but you will want to be mindful of how many credits you consume when running analysis in your maps. It's a good habit to check this each time before proceeding. You can purchase additional credits on an as-needed basis if you reach your monthly limit. It is recommended that you always check the option to use only the current map extent and that you zoom into the area you want analyzed. Doing so limits the number of features the tool needs to examine when performing analysis, as well as limiting the number of credits used by the tool. If you don't check this box, all of the features in the layer will be analyzed, which could use a large amount of your credits. Now let's run the analysis tool. You can continue to do other work in your map while waiting for the analysis to complete. The new layer will be added to the map when the analysis is finished. When we open the layer's attribute table, we can see the process was successful because it has aggregated the number of apartments in each neighborhood. For example, there are 24 apartment complexes in Westminster. You can also click in the map layer to view the data. There are 25 apartment complexes in Bocage. The ability to join features is another useful tool. This process takes the attributes from one table or layer and copies them into another, based on a shared field or a spatial relationship. I want to alter the Breck Parks layer by noting which Metro Council District each park belongs to. So Breck Parks is my target layer for the spatial join, while the Metro Council District layer is my join layer. When the process completes and I click on a park in the new layer, the Metro Council District is added at the end. This park is in District 12. Let's circle back to the Perkins Road drainage incidents. I've loaded my point layer and the custom polygon we created earlier at the intersection of Perkins and Segan. I want to make a separate layer with only points that lie within the polygon. The Find Existing Locations tool in the Find Locations category makes this easy. We simply build a query to look for the points in the point layer that lie completely within the polygon layer. Then we zoom in to conserve credits. When we run this analysis, it creates a new point layer with only the points we wanted in the area of the intersection. This is a very simple demonstration of the tool, and you can use it to break down much larger point datasets. Another useful tool is the Enriched Layer tool. It uses government records, such as U.S. Census data, to retrieve information about areas in our map. Here, I'm using the tool to find census data for Catholic Church parishes. We simply select the map layer we want to enrich, then the variables we want the tool to retrieve from the data. Be especially mindful of credits when using this tool. When the new layer loads, it shows the education levels, population, and income breakdown in each parish. The Find Nearest tool in the Use Proximity category can take a group of points and compare the real-world distances between them. In this example, I want to find the nearest hospital in terms of driving time to a group of schools in the middle of Baton Rouge. I'm limiting the search range to only 15 minutes to preserve credits. We enter those parameters and run the analysis. The output layer shows the quicker route to a hospital for each of the schools. Finally, the Extract Data tool in the Manage Data category allows you to export your data to your account in a variety of formats. I'll export the point layer we created earlier as the CSV file. The exported file can be found in my content folder, and now I can open it in Excel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video, where we'll show you how to connect to our APIs in OpenDataBR.